So when you think about the cloud from an end user perspective, a data science ML perspective, there's a bunch of different things you can do, weird names, it's very confusing. One way I like to slice things down or a lens through which we can look at this that might be useful is to break down infrastructure as a service, look at the cloud through the lens of platform or function as a service, and then software as a service. Like, what are the different things available if we just look at these as our three big buckets and how does it help you as a data scientist, ML engineer, person trying to get something done? The top level is kind of more of the traditional accounting equation. So it's like, hey, CFO wants to go from capital expenditures to operating expenditures. Let's not own our data centers. That's cool for you. You can go to AWS, and we'll use AWS here just to keep things standard, but GCP, Azure, lots of great clouds. I can get a, previously I got a VM from my, my IT team, and maybe there was some sort of hypervisor and VM and vSphere and all such stuff. Now it's an EC2 instance, but I'm still just getting remote access to a VM. That works great. And if you're working at a lower level where you want to spin up, you want to handle the actual infrastructure, you could set up, AWS has tons of these different services, which is basically just the virtual version of what you already had, firewalls, virtual private clouds, like one of the original services I think was SQS, a simple queuing service. EC2 is the canonical, that's the server, that's the VM, you know, kind of workhorse. Great. Not super exciting per se. Uh, where I think things get a lot more fun is what was previously called like, or is still called platform as a service. And now you're seeing all this stuff pop up under function as a service or serverless, which is a weird term because it's not like there are no more servers. It's just you're not as res you're not as responsible for provisioning them. And some of these names are even kind of funny too, but they're all really, really interesting. So it's like one of the early services in AWS was Elastic Beanstalk. Then they added Lambda. I think Lambda was probably the first one to take the serverless title. And then now there's stuff like Cloud Runner. And so what, what's going on here? We'll do I'll do a demo of these in, later on, but Lambda, the idea basically when we say serverless is like, instead of saying AWS, give me a server or, or whatever cloud, and then I'm going to give, I'm, I, I'm responsible for installing stuff, grabbing source code, building and running everything. With these services, they've given you a higher level of abstraction. So I could say like with Lambda, here's a Python function, and then AWS will be responsible for the operating, the operating system, provisioning the VM, all of those things. Those, that all still needs to happen. It doesn't go away. They just do it for you. And with Cloud Runner as an example, like you can just pass in a Git repo GitHub repository, and say, "Hey, here's the here here's the command I want you to run to start my app," and they'll go they'll just take it from there, which is really interesting, especially from a CI CD the CD part uh, perspective. And then finally, so like basically, I guess to wrap this up is like this is the really interesting area, and if you haven't gotten started in this, it's actually not a bad thing because previously you might have used Elastic Beanstalk that probably still works really well. But something like Cloud Runner is, is relatively newer and very easy to get started with too. So there's lots of good options for abstracting away infrastructure so that you don't have to care about servers as much as you would if you were just provisioning everything yourself. And then finally, of course, is the SaaS layer. And this is where the burden on the end user goes way down. Never The burden never goes away to like you know use computational and quantitative techniques to solve business problems. That remains with us as end users, as always. But you know, using something like a Snowflake or a Databricks, you're able to basically throw as much data as you want at them. They'll provide near infinite compute and storage, giving you interfaces like SQL, Spark, Python, things like that. You need to come up with the smart things to do, but you don't have to think about how the data is stored, the networking, how, how the computation is going to work, how to scale, that sort of stuff. They take care of it for you. Or I'll throw continual in there, right, as we're thinking about end-to-end -end ML. It's another SaaS offering. These may be deployed in your AWS environment where they're spinning up compute instances that your organization owns and is billed for us within your existing VPCs. Lots of different ways of deploying SaaS applications. It may also just be, hey, it's in the, the company, you know, in the vendor's cloud, you never see it, you just go to a web app or use a command line tool. All of those are possibilities. But anyway, wrapping this up is basically like in or one way of looking at the cloud that's useful for the end users to think about levels of abstraction like, are, am I using services that are infrastructure as a service, like a, a VM, an EC2 instance? Am I using stuff that's more what they would call platforms as a service? And I'll, I'll combine that with functions as a service. Like, hey, here's a thing I want to do. You figure out the rest a little bit easier, but I'm giving up some control. And then finally, kind of like the most easy, least hassle, but also the higher cost and other things and, and less, even less control. You know, a Snowflake, a Databricks, any SaaS application that you might use.